Hey everyone, this is Dr. David Song from Rehab Hero and today we'll be going over a full program for your knee meniscus. So we'll be going over acute, subacute, and late stage recovery exercises, so take a look. Knee meniscus pain is usually felt right at the joint line and it's typically felt in positions where you're planting your knee and have to twist your body on top of that knee or in positions where you have to weight bear on that knee, either in a squat or a lunge or going up or down stairs. There tends to be some positions that are a little bit more aggravating than others, such as when the knees go inwards or what's called a valgus knee during those same types of activities like the squat. And sometimes it hurts when you're doing the exact opposite, which is varus knee where the knee's going outwards. This will really depend on the location of your meniscus tear and the severity of that tear as well. A lot of people believe that you need to have surgery for this type of injury, but that's not necessarily true. It really does depend on the severity of this injury. You can manage it quite well with conservative treatment, meaning some soft tissue therapy and exercise. So we'll get to doing those exercises right now. We'll be starting with the acute stage of recovery, which is usually days one to four following your initial injury. The main purpose of the acute stage exercises is to maintain movement going through that knee. You want to maintain as much mobility as possible while still sticking to a pain-free range or a range of motion that's very tolerable for you to withstand. So the first exercise we're going to be doing is called a hamstring heel slide and this is how you do it. You're going to start by lying down on your back first. All right. From here, it's a very simple motion. All you're going to do is take the heel of your foot, drive it into the ground so that you start to recruit the hamstrings muscle, which is on the back of your thigh. And from there, you're just going to drag that heel on the floor towards your buttock. Now you can do this exercise on your bed and on the floor or on a yoga mat. It really just depends on what you want to do. You just slide it right to your buttock and you're going to do as many repetitions as you can without it aggravating your knee symptoms. When you're returning back to the beginning position, you don't have to drag your heel back forwards. You can do it so lightly if you can't tolerate lifting your own leg just yet. Or you can just simply, after you pull it up, just reset that motion. Normally you're going to do this exercise every day during that first one to four day period. You can do this once in the morning, once at night, and you aim for anywhere between 10 to 12 reps if you can tolerate it. If you can't do it, that many repetitions right away because the knee pain is very sensitive, that is okay. You'll eventually build up to it over this four day period. The next exercise we're going to be doing is called the terminal knee extension, and this is for your quadriceps muscle. This next exercise is for the front of your thigh. It's a muscle group called the quadriceps. All you need is any pillow. I'm going to use a bolster here, but you you can use any pillow when you're doing this exercise. So first things first, you're going to lie down on your back and have that pillow placed right underneath the crease of your knee. And from there, you're going to actively activate the quadriceps to push the back of your knee down into the pillow. What this is going to do is use the quad to stabilize the knee in an isometric contraction. You will hold this for five to seven seconds and when you relax, you can have a gentle bend in the knee once again. When you do this, I like to go for a five to seven second rest and you're going to go one more time and you will do anywhere between six to eight repetitions as tolerated and you can do two to three sets daily. I like to kind of split those sets up between the morning and the evening just so that we're maintaining our mobility levels as much as possible. This exercise is also really good at trying to maintain the strength and stability of that knee as much as possible so that you're not just completely bedridden and you're not allowing that knee to just completely decondition. Simple enough, if you can't tolerate that full knee extension, you can stack a few more pillows up and just bend it as far as you can possible. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it and we'll go into our third exercise that you can do during the acute stage of healing. All right, so the last exercise we're going to do is a seated knee extension, so right now, since things are very sensitive, all we're going to do is use gravity as our resistance. We're not going to add any bands. We're not going to add any weights. We're just going to try to get you to move that knee. Once again, in this acute stage of healing, the main thing is to stick to your range of motion that is comfortable. This range of motion will increase daily. So from a seated position, it could be a chair, it could be anything. All you're going to do is keep that knee in place. You can support it with your hands if you need to. And you're just going to lift that foot off the ground and just squeeze that quadriceps muscle. And you're going to hold that contraction for once again, five to seven seconds. And then you can just slowly lower it back down and rest for another five to seven seconds. Just like the other exercise that we just completed, the terminal knee extension, this will target the quadriceps muscle. And just like that one, you could do six to eight repetitions and two to three sets daily. The main goal is to just maintain that range of motion in your knee. 
Next, we're going to go and focus on the subacute stage of healing. This stage of healing, we like to focus on reintroducing body weight based exercises or resistance exercises so that we can start leveling up those muscles. This next exercise is also going to target the front of your thighs, the quads. We're just going to start very basic and do it from a seated position. This is the sit to stand squat exercise. First thing you're going to do is just bring your feet closer to the body when you're doing this exercise. This is just so you don't have to lean so far forward when you get up right away. If you need to, you can put your hands on your knees to give you extra support if your knees are very sensitive while you're doing these exercises. Keep your feet generally shoulder distance apart, but you could go wider or more narrow depending on how comfortable those different positions feel on your knee. From there, all you're going to do is stand up and you're going to go to a fully stand standing position and from there you're just going to sit back down for this exercise if the chair you're using is a little too low and a little too sensitive for your knee you can take something like a pillow and just place it on the seat so that you're just starting from a slightly higher position and if you have more pillows you can stack it even higher and then to progress you'll just slowly remove the pillows one at a time as you get stronger, as the pain decreases over this subacute stage of healing. The subacute stage of healing usually lasts anywhere between four days following the injury to two weeks. So that's what we'll be looking at as a timeline for these exercises. This next exercise is called the stability ball wall squat. And for it, you do need a stability ball. If you don't have one, you can order one off online. They usually run you about $20. What we're going to do is place this ball on the wall here, and we're going to put it roughly at the level of your low back. From here, you're going to lean into it with your body weight. Now, this is to decrease the amount of pressure or weight that we're putting through your knees. If you find that you are getting stronger and your pain is improving, then you could actually lean off of the ball more and more as you get better. So for now, we're going to lean our body weight onto it. In terms of your foot placement, you're going to put them both shoulder distance apart and put about 60% of your body weight into your heels and the other 40% into the front of your foot. And this is so that you can engage your glutes and your hip muscles to do most of the movement. From here, keep the core nice and braced and you're just going to go down into a squatting position. And you can hold this position for about five seconds if you can tolerate it. If not, you can just come right back out of this position back into that top position. As well as if you can't go that low, then you could just start by going halfway, whatever feels good on that knee, and coming back up from there. And as you do these exercises, you should find that the, the next day you try them out, you could go a little bit deeper. And then hold and come back out. For this exercise, you generally want to aim for about 10 to 12 repetitions, all of which are pain free. You want to aim for about a 6 out of 10 difficulty with this exercise because you want the exercise to be challenging but not overly difficult. And this is so that we can stimulate the changes to occur in that knee, in those muscles of the knee. And we're trying to stimulate a positive change. The third exercise that we'll be doing in the subacute stage of healing is the hamstring bridge walk. The reason why we're doing this is so that we can engage the muscles on the back of your thigh this time. The last two exercises were for the front of your thigh. So now we're going to work the hamstrings. Uh, this is best done if you have a padded surface like carpet at home or if you have a yoga mat at home. You can also just, if you only have hardwood flooring, you can also just wear running shoes so that the cushion of the shoe protects your heel. You wanna start by lying down on your back with your feet now about hip distance apart. So unlike the squat where your feet were shoulder distance, we're going to go hip distance. And this is so that we can focus more of the activity on our hamstrings. From here, you're going to lift the pelvis up until your torso is about the same alignment of your thighs. From here, you're just going to just lift one leg up, take a step forward, and you're just going to walk those heels forwards. Your pelvis will slowly lower towards the ground, but still try to maintain a proper alignment between your torso and your thighs. From here, come back up. All right, and once you're at the top position where you started, you can then drop your hips down and take a quick rest. And then you'll just do another one of these. So generally speaking, I like to walk out about three to four steps, okay? Aiming for about six inches between each step or so, and then back down. I also like to aim for anywhere between five to eight repetitions. It really just depends on how sensitive your knees are and how strong your hammies are. All right, that concludes the last exercise that we're doing for the subacute stage of healing. Next, we're going to focus on the late stage of healing. 
So these exercises in the late stage of healing can be done anywhere between two weeks post-injury to three months with progression through these exercises, either in intensity by carrying more weight or just doing a harder variation. So we'll get started with some that I like to start off with. The first exercise that we'll be doing for the late stage of healing is the toe raise step up. For this exercise, uh, you do need something like a stair step or a pile box or an aerobic stepper, just something that's going to elevate you about one foot off of the ground. You're going to start with one leg on the elevated surface and the other leg on the floor. What you really want to make sure of though is when you're doing this exercise, this bottom leg has its forefoot raised off the ground. And what this will do is prevent you from assisting with your good leg when pushing up. So you're doing raise the toes and you're just going to step up to the surface. From there, you're just going to come back down, tap the floor with your heel, and once again, come back up. Now, if the toe raise step up is a little too difficult, then you could do a regular step up just until you build up that strength and that bottom range of motion. So the difference being, if you look at my ankle, that if we were doing the toe raise step up like that, you will instead be using your calf muscles to kind of propel you up a little bit more. But once you have built up that strength in that knee, it's more ideal to isolate that movement to the working leg. So you're going to do the heel raise step up. The next exercise that we'll be doing is called the heel elevated narrow stance squat. What this does is it really challenges your full range of motion in that knee, as well as activate your quadriceps to move you through that range. First you're going to do is put a uh, elevated surface on the ground. So we're using a bumper plate today, but you can use anything. You can use the handles of dumbbell. You can use a rolled up towel, just whatever will raise your heel about two inches off the ground. From here, you're just going to step on it. Your feet are going to be roughly hip distance apart. Okay, so a regular squat has you a little bit wider. For this one, we're going to come a little bit more narrow. As you can see, if you look at my feet, only my heels are on the elevated surface and then the rest of my weight is on the balls of my toes. From here, you're just going to squat down. In this version of the squat, you're going to let your knees go past your toes as far as they comfortably can. And generally speaking, the knees are going to track over the middle of your foot, which is roughly between the second and third toe. So pay attention to where those knees are going when you're doing this exercise. You'll also notice that my torso is a little bit more upright than it is in the regular squat. You'll see that this upright torso is going to load up my knees a little bit more because my weight is going to be a little bit more forwards rather than backwards. For this exercise, we're going to do about 10 to 12 repetitions. And if you're finding that doing the full range of motion is a little easy once you progress through your program, you could do something like grab a weight and then do a goblet squat version of this. And you could just keep increasing the weight as needed when you get stronger. All right, so the next exercise that we'll be doing is our last exercise. So let's take a look. All right, so the last exercise that we'll be doing is going to work those hamstring muscles once again. As you notice, we do want to still target those hamstring muscles as they help to stabilize that knee. So we're going to be using 10 pound dumbbells. Um, you could choose a weight that's more appropriate to your level of fitness. You could go lighter, you could go heavier, it really just depends how much you can handle. This is the Romanian deadlift. For the Romanian deadlift, it's very similar to the full deadlift, except for you just don't go into the full range of motion. You want to make sure that your back is nice and straight, core brace while you're doing this, soft bend in the knees. You're going to push your hips back just a little bit while initiating that movement. From here, you're just going to hinge forwards at the hips up until your hands just pass those knees of yours. And then from there, you're going to drive your heels into the floor and stand back up. You'll feel a stretch at the bottom of the motion in the back of your thigh when you're doing this Romanian deadlift. That's kind of how you know you've gone deep enough and from there, you're going to come right back up, activating those muscles. You can do anywhere between 10 to 12 repetitions of this exercise and do about three sets. For all of the exercises that we're doing in the late stage of recovery, we're doing these exercises about every other day or three times a week. And this is because these exercises are much more difficult. You're going to need to give your muscles that one day of recovery time between exercise sessions. And that's pretty much it when you're doing this. Also remember, you want about 60% of your weight distributed into your heel, 40% in your forefoot. This is so that you're well balanced through the foot yet activating those posterior chain muscles, namely the glutes and hamstrings. You might feel this a bit in the low back and that's completely okay. 
All right, guys, and that wraps up our video on a knee meniscus program. So this program can be done right from the first day of your injury up until three months post injury. Like I said, though, for that late stage of recovery, you do want a more progressive program. Likely you'll be changing it up in terms of difficulty at least once every two weeks. And of course, it's always recommended to do any of these exercises, especially if they're new, with a healthcare practitioner or one-on-one -on -one with someone who knows their stuff. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time.